Hello there, my friends. The new D&D &D rules for 2024 are here. The new player handbook is out, and we're making a uh, bard today. So uh, this is the first level bard right here, and uh, I'm going to go over this with you and write this in a darker ink so you can see. But uh, basically what I did here with this guy was um, follow the outlines in the book. And so basically what you do is you pick a class and then you go to that class. And so in this case, we go to Bard and you just transfer all of the Bard properties, well, Bard features right here onto the character sheet. So basically your primary ability is gonna be Charisma you're going to have a D8 for your um, hit points. So you put D8 up here under hit points, right? And uh, for your skill proficiencies, you can choose any three skill proficiencies. So for Bard, I picked under uh, Dexterity Acrobatics. And uh, of course, we're going to have Charisma as our primary statistic, right? So I picked um, as a Bard uh, Intimidation and performance. And I did that because what I'm going to build here is the dance bard. When we get to level three, the subclass is going to be dance. So um, yeah, so what I wanted to do was I wanted to have acrobatics. That makes sense for dance, right? Do you ever see like those old movies with Fred Astaire where he's like flipping over chairs and stuff like that? And uh, also you could do like, um, you know, break dancing, that sort of thing. Uh, maybe a little parkour kind of thing going on there as well. So charisma, uh, I picked intimidation because I figure like, what if it's a dance competition, a dance off, right? So you want to be able to intimidate his opponent and of course performance. That's just a no brainer. So that's why I picked those three. And then weapon proficiency is just simple weapons. So you just write simple down here under weapons. And uh, the tool proficiencies, you get to pick three musical instruments. So I picked the uh, pan flute. I wanted things that were um, lightweight, right? Or going to be at hand. So I picked the pan flute, a lyre, which is a little harp basically, and uh, the drum. And I know drum kits can be like big, but I figured there may be always something there that you can drum on uh, around since he's gonna be a dancer. So he's not actually gonna wanna have, to, I don't want him carrying a lot of stuff. Uh, and also he has light armor training. So I started off on level one, I started him with uh, studded leather armor. But as we level this guy up, uh, and that'll be in uh, subsequent videos where I'll piece all these uh, together. Once you get to level three, you'll see that like we don't need the studded leather armor uh, anymore uh, because of a property that uh, we have as a level three dance part, right? So... Studded leather armor, though, will give us an armor class of 15, which is nice. Now, that's not something you start with. Like, that's not under starting equipment. So here where it says starting equipment, choose A or B. Uh, a, you get leather armor, two daggers, musical instrument, blah, blah, blah. Or you can just take 90 gold, gold pieces. And that's what I did. I took 90 gold pieces because we're going to buy our leather armor separately. And I'm pretty sure that costs... I forget how much it costs. It costs more than... I think it was 45 gold pieces. So we're going to need the extra gold pieces because here, if you buy an entertainer's pack, you get 19 gold pieces left over. Um, so, yeah, I wanted to go that way instead where we just buy our own equipment because I don't necessarily want the daggers or uh, the musical instruments right off the bat since he's going to be more of a dance guy, right? So the other thing you do is um, you pick... Uh, you, you write down your class, your bard class features, right? So we wrote those down over here. And basically you've got at level one, you've got two class features, right? So you can, uh, you get bardic inspiration. So what is bardic inspiration? Well, bardic inspiration means that your character will have inspiration dice. So when you look at this here, this chart, it says right here, you'll get a bardic inspiration die, bardic die, and it's a d6 to start with, and it goes up as you level up. And uh, yeah, so basically um, there are times when you can do things with that die. For instance, 
You can use your bardic inspiration to inspire another character and give that die to another character. So say like your uh, friend the paladin is in combat. Uh, you can like say, I'm giving, in, I'm giving bardic inspiration to the paladin. So they get a d6. So if the, um, the paladin rolls like a 14 and they need a 15 to hit, they can roll that d6 on top and add that, the result of that die roll to their attack roll. And, uh, sorry, excuse me there. Uh, and yeah, and uh, so you're, you're buffing your characters. You're a support uh, character in that point. And uh, yeah, and you can use that uh, equal to the number of times your charisma modifier until you have a long rest. So the way I'm building this, our charisma modifier is going to end up being plus three. So we have three of those per long rest. So that's really important. I think that's a really significant uh, thing to be able to do. And then under uh, spell casting, what I did was you get to pick a certain number of spells and cantrips. You get two cantrips and four prepared spells. And you get spell slots for uh, two spell, uh, two level one spell slots. So what did I pick? Well, I picked um, basically go to your uh, cantrips here. And I just took the ones that were recommended, which um, here was uh, Vicious Mockery. And uh, I also took uh, Minor Illusion as cantrips. So Minor Illusion. And the reason I picked Minor Illusion was because I want there to be an ambiance. When this character does his inspirational dances, I want there to be like lights and maybe a uh, setting, you know? Um, so if he's doing like a tropical dance, there'll be like tropical plants, the illusion of tropical plants and a breeze and, and all kinds of, um, you know, things like that. Uh, I know that's more, it's a visual thing. So I want there to be like a light show, uh, basically. And I also picked uh, Vicious Mockery because Vicious Mockery allows for so much hilarity at the table because basically you're like using insults in order to cause psychic damage to your opponents. And that can be a lot of fun. And I'm going to make a bunch of videos and I have some already that um, are actually, I, I have a whole bunch on this channel that are just insults that you can use for D and D that are clean. And uh, they're, you know, like things like your mama jokes or um, uh, jokes that make fun of like a character's, uh, intelligence level or the way they smell or something like that. And it's, uh, you know, it's a lot of fun. So, um, so I really like that. And then as far as like the actual spells, uh, you want to have another attack spell. So I picked Dissonant Whispers because that's another one where like you implant words and like, since he's got a high charisma, I'm thinking like, you know, you're gonna, um, you're going to use language. Uh, you're going to use uh, charismatic ability in order to convince somebody uh, that, uh, you know, like their teacher never liked them or something like that. You know, and give them, again, psychic damage. I also picked Charm Person because we're going to be uh, able to perform and it fits with that kind of like performance character. You'll be able to charm somebody by your just your raw talent. I did color spray because that was recommended by the book. Now, again, like that could be like in addition to your dance, could be like a, you know, a light show. And um, I also picked healing word and healing word I picked just because that is extremely useful because you can cast healing word as a bonus action. You can heal somebody else in your party without even being close to them, just in line of sight. And that's a big deal. So, um, yeah, so that's basically what I did for level one. Oh, and if you keep going, so so let's keep going with the character build. Uh, the next thing you do is you pick your uh, background, right? And you pick your, um, like your origin, basically. So you pick like your, um, your background and then you pick your uh, species. So what I did was I picked a charlatan background for the bard. So let's do this here. Let's go to charlatan for the backgrounds. And here's the reason I picked 
charlatan. And here's the thing. I've already heard some people complain about backgrounds a little bit because they're like, well, there's only certain backgrounds that make sense. And that's kind of true. Uh, there are certain backgrounds that make more sense than others. So for, for a bard, a charlatan background makes a lot of sense because you can add scores to dexterity, constitution, or charisma. Now you can add one to each, or you can add two and one to like two. So I'm going to go two in charisma and one in dexterity, I think is the way I did it. No, I did it the other way around. I did <clears throat> a standard array. So I did like um, the standard array of scores, and I went the way the bard's standard array is suggested, right? So um, when you go to step three, I actually do this a little bit out of order. So I do my standard array. And so the bard's going to be strength, eight, dex, 14, con, 12, intelligence, 11, wisdom, 10, and charisma, 15. So if I'm going to do that, then it makes sense that I would add one to charisma and two to dexterity because that'll take me up to 16 in both categories. Now, why would I do that? Because when you have even numbers, your ability modifiers increase, right? So, so the difference between a 15 and a 16 is a plus two or a plus three in your ability score modifier. So you want those even numbers, especially at level one, like to, to uh, now you'll have one left over using the standard array as being, um, you know, off, but that's okay because then you can buff that later. So, um, but anyway, yeah, so that's what I did. So we're gonna have uh, minus one in strength. We're gonna have plus three in dex. We're gonna have plus one in constitution zero in wisdom and plus one in intelligence. And that's pretty amazing actually. So uh, the other thing that we can do with our charlatan background is we get skill proficiencies in deception and sleight of hand. So we can go ahead and uh, click or check mark deception and sleight of hand as having proficiency, right? We also get a tool proficiency, which is a forgery kit. And that could be interesting. That's not that doesn't necessarily go right hand in hand with a dance bard, but it doesn't go against it either. So like it, it you know, this could be interesting because I you could have taken the uh, entertainer background, but entertainer background, your tool proficiencies are picking like. Um, Musical instruments and acrobatic and performance are your skill proficiencies. And we already took those uh, because of our bard background. Now we could have taken something else instead. That's totally fine. But then as a species, so you're, this is how it's all going to round out. So you kind of do all these steps at the same time. So we get to pick a species. And I picked halfling, right? And the reason I pick halfling is because basically... You've got these different traits here, right? So you have nimbleness, you're brave, so you have advantage on saving throws if you're if you know somebody's trying to frighten you. You have nimbleness, so you can move through the space of any creature that is a size larger than you. So that's pretty cool. Um, and uh, so you can dance right through somebody. And luck, you get to roll, re-roll on a d20 if you roll a one. So that's that's really nice. And you're naturally stealthy, so you can hide when you're obscured by a creature who is at least one size larger than you. So that will come in handy as well on the battlefield, because then you get, like, surprise. And, um, yeah, so that turned out to be um, the basic build that you can see here. Uh, I think... At this point, I'm going to... Oh, and the other thing is um, you take a feat, right? So everybody gets a feat at the beginning. And um, this feat for Bard I took was the skilled feat. So if you take the skilled feat, you can add proficiency to three skills or tools. So I took three skills. So I took persuasion. I took perception because that's always handy. And I took stealth as well. So I figure we're small, and uh, we're halflings. We're kind of charlatans, so like we're gonna have like 
you know, that kind of sneaky sleight of hand thing going on there, right? We're nimble. We got halfling nimbleness. And uh, I did this to, I, I made the name, and I made the name of this character Flat Lee. Flat Lee. And if you get the reference to that, put it in the comments below, because I'd love to see if anybody gets that kind of inside joke. Uh, the other thing I did was I took, uh, when we, uh, you get starting gold and I decided to like buy my own weapons. So I bought a quarter staff because I just like the idea of the idea of like dancing with a cane, right? Like twirling a cane and like smacking it on the ground. And, and the neat thing about quarter staff, it has the versatile ability so you can use it two handed and do extra damage. But it also has a special ability, which is topple. So you could actually like knock somebody over with it if you have weapon mastery in, in its quarter staff. But the other thing you can do, I did was we got the, the Vex Nick thing going on, like we did with the Rogue. So if you haven't seen my Rogue video or you haven't seen my Vex Nick video, watch that. There's a synergy between weapons that have Vex and Nick if you have mastery over these weapons. So hand axes and crossbows seem like. Um, Pretty thing, I, a pretty cool thing. I figure with the axes, he might be a juggler as well as a dancer. So I thought that would be a pretty cool thing. And daggers are just, you know, neat, concealable, hideable. And again, I like light crossbow too, because you want to have some uh, ability to uh, hit with a ranged weapon. And these are all simple weapons. So they he qualifies for all of these things. Nice thing too is your spell casting modifier is charisma. So you end up with a plus three, your, your charisma modifier is plus three with this build. And uh, you end up with a spell save DC of 13 and a spell attack bonus of plus five, which is really nice. So the other things that you can fill out at this point, your initiative is going to be plus three because it's the same as your dex modifier. Your speed's 30, uh, no penalty for being of small size. Uh, same as, you know, it's the same for humans and all that sort of thing. Your passive perception is only 10. So, like, you're not extremely perceptive, but that's why I put a, uh, a um, uh, proficiency bonus uh, in perception. And our proficiency bonus is 2. So, for, for perception throws, we are going to get a plus 2, even though in all these other wisdom throws, we're going to get a 0. So, um, yeah, we're going to have 5s in all of our um, dexterity. And we're going to have fives in all of our charismas. Plus one in all the um, intelligence ones. And uh, minus one in athletics. I can live with that. This is a very versatile character. Uh, lots of neat stuff here. I made him chaotic good. Uh, it just seems like dancing, you know, I don't know. Seems like he's going to be moving around a lot. He's going to be running around. I figure like chaotic kind of fits that. And uh, I gave him common, halfling, gnomish. And before you add all the weapons, because of your background and because of the uh, bard build, you end up with 140 uh, gold pieces. So if you want to start with 140 and then deduct the things that you buy, like your studded leather armor and your weapons, go right ahead. Uh, if you want to steal this character, I'm going to like go ahead and let you look at the character sheet. Feel free to steal this character. Um, I'm going to do characters for uh, builds for all the classes and hopefully level, level them up to the point where they have a subclass. So this one will be a dance bard. And I uh, hope you join me for all those videos. And if this helps you, please um, smash like because that helps me. And uh, you'll keep me uh, having fun and making these for you. I teach D&D &D to kids. I teach D&D &D to new players. Uh, it's one of the things that I really love to do right now. So thanks for your help in allowing me to do that. And have a great day out there. I hope this character does well for you. Take care.